criminalized under this ruling? That's some great questions. I think the, there's been a, a fear, and, and I share it, that, that we may see the end of fertility. I was going to ask you those questions, but just to understand where we are in the legal process, is there a chance this gets repealed? Is there a chance this gets undone in some kind of way? And or will we see this at the Supreme Court level, the federal Supreme Court? It's a, so it's a good question. There could be a petition for um, to ask the United States Supreme Court to hear this case. The, 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 certainly the uh, Fertility Center has the right to petition the Supreme Court. Um, and uh, the question is whether it's going to be deemed uh, worthwhile by, you know, whether there's a chance that the Supreme Court would hear this and uh, and whether the Supreme Court would actually hear it. And I, I suspect that we will see a petition to the Supreme Court, but I have a I have a, a feeling that the Supreme Court, that a majority of justices on the Supreme Court do not want to hear this case, that the only people, the only justices who would favor hearing a case like these are the ones who have taken more extreme positions who are sort of, you know, probably supportive privately of this decision. Uh, we just saw earlier this week that the Supreme Court declined to take a University of Virginia case on the area of affirmative action, where it looks like six of the nine justices currently don't want to revisit an issue that they just did in the last uh, term, where they already laid out some pretty clear um, standards on uh, race-based college admissions and did not want to come back and turn back to the subject. And, and my, my suspicion is that the Supreme Court has no appetite to touch this. So I think that, practically speaking, this is the law of the land in, uh, in Alabama, and anybody thinking about getting fertility services or providing them needs to treat this as a, as the a sort of a final decision. This is the law of the land in Alabama. What does this mean? Let's talk about the couples and people who have embryos currently on ice in Alabama. What should they do? Does this mean they need to immediately um, proceed with trying to have children to use the embryos? Should they move the embryos to another state? And can they even move to another state? Or is that uh, something that could be criminalized under this ruling? Those are some great questions. I think, I mean, my, my general feeling is that uh, we haven't yet seen sort of the, there's been a, a fear, and, and I share it, that, that we may see the end of fertility centers operating, feeling comfortable to operate in Alabama. I'm, I'm confident that if it comes to that, if that does happen, there will be arrangements made for the, you know, safe transport of embryos. And so I don't think that, you know, any parents with embryos who are that are currently uh, you know there need to take urgent action to move out of state so I, th I think we there is time to see what's going to happen and I think there will under any circumstances right if frankly think about it if, if, if centers did not transport them safely then they would be committing like you know a widespread uh, right killing under this under the definition of this new law and uh, on your um, your second question of was sorry was remind me was uh, um, I, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. I apologize. Uh, well, I guess if if a couple is assessing their options, is it like should they immediately oh, travel, have kids? Right? Should, you they immediately, should, travel. It, should, right. should they immediately implant or, you know, you know, what should they? Yeah, how so, are no, they so I, I would say, look, so, yeah, I would, on the issue of immediate decision, I, I, I think people have time uh, to uh, assess, you know, given that the, you know, given that these uh, embryos are being given the sanctity of life, it's hard to imagine that people will be denied the opportunity or, or that there will be destruction, just the opposite. Right, the, the, the risks for the doctors involved would be something going wrong. So it may be that doctors will not want to handle them and be forced to transport them to another state. On the issue of travel, travel is a really interesting issue. Alabama was one of the states that threatened, uh, certain state officials threatened to prosecute women who traveled out of state for abortions. We've seen a hard pushback on that. And, and also, um, it's very clear that the right to travel is a fundamental right that all Americans have. And that includes the right to travel for healthcare decisions. And uh, we, you know, I, I, I suspect that I personally, I, it, it appears that the threats being made by Alabama and other states, state officials and other states, to prosecute is uh, is really hollow. And that there really is, no, it's a, it's it's outrageous that that the people are being threatened in the abortion context for traveling to pursue their legal options elsewhere. And I think we're going to see the same. I, I expect the same here. Uh, you know, parents should not be afraid. But although this is the problem we're going to see is that there, what's happening is a lot of cost is being imposed on these families. Uh, you know, one in six families, uh, you know, trying to have children using fertility services is the number I saw. So it may, it's really this is a yeah.
that gets repealed? Is there a chance this gets undone in some kind of way? And or will we see this? Writing them needs to treat this as a as the a sort of a final decision for um, to ask the United States Supreme Court to hear this case. The center's operating, feeling comfortable to operate in Alabama. I'm, I'm confident that I mean, my my general feeling is that uh, we haven't yet seen sort of